first with the output script descriptors. Um, these uh, describe a script pub key and everything you, you need to to spend it. So so right now in Coral we have our our descriptors for you know the standard pub key hash, witness pub key hash, uh, multi sig, and you know script hash, witness script hash, those things. Um, but uh, uh, Sipa has been working on Miniscript for a long time, and Miniscript is really an extension of descriptors. It uh, Miniscript kind of came out of the idea of descriptors. Um, so eventually, these descriptors will be able to support Miniscript, and Miniscript is a, a a language that allows us to describe a lot of just arbitrary scripts, scripts that can do lots of crazy things. Um, so you can have like a bunch of like if else branches do these this and something or this or something uh, time locks and and relative time locks and all of that stuff. So Miniscript really opens up the avenue for having scripts that can do basically anything that you want uh, within the limits of the scripting system, of course. Scripts that you can do almost anything that you want, and then having that inside of descriptors means that we have we can represent those to a wallet to our descriptor wallet in the, the same way that all other descriptors are represented to the wallet, and it can just understand what to do with that script. It'll know uh, when you want to sign, sign a transaction, it'll know how to fill out the transaction with that script and all the things that script needs in order to produce a valid transaction. So with descriptors, eventually we'll get many script, and then this just means that the Bitcoin Core wallet will be able to support signing uh, literally any script that you want. You can do any outrageous contract, however smart or stupid it is. I mean, that that sounds fantastic, but why wasn't that the case before? Because, I mean, you know, Bitcoin script is, was very exhaustive before. Why couldn't just the wallet do these arbitrary scripts in, in the legacy script type system? Yeah, so that's a good question. And, and it's really because um, it's really hard to understand Bitcoin script. So uh, as as I think we all know, Bitcoin for a very long time was was all uh, all about the keys, right? It's why it's called the script pub key, even though it's a script. Uh, the output script's called script pub key because it, it really, you know, back when Bitcoin came out, it was just a pub key, and it, it was the input script is called the script sig because back when Bitcoin came out, all you had there was a signature. Uh, but but Satoshi had this whole scripting system that no one really used. Um, I mean, I think someone did a a look through of the entire blockchain history, and for you know first several hundred thousand blocks, or first couple hundred thousand blocks, uh, you you just didn't see any any weird scripts ever. And and this is really because that the scripting system is hard to understand. It's hard to Look at a script, uh, know what the opcodes are, and then understand, like, figure out, understand how to spend, how to create a spend for that script. Because the, the scripting system is, um, is a fourth based scripting system. And, and it's just hard to reason about all of these opcodes and the different branches and all that. So what Miniscript provides us is a framework to understand these. Uh, Miniscript is a subset of the scripting system. So it's not even all the opcodes that Bitcoin allows. It's like, I think it only uses maybe 20 of them. Uh, and there's like a hundred something. Uh, and what this allows is, is for a way to, to understand, uh, to reason about what a script does, all the, con and all the conditions for reaching every branch of that script so that you can know how to sign for it in the future. So a lot of previous scripts are just, you know, to reason about it requires being a human and thinking about it and staring at it. Uh, but with Miniscript, we can do it with a computer. And this this makes it a lot easier for, for everyone because now you could describe a contract in human terms and you can get a Bitcoin script that that maybe if you look at it you don't understand but but the the compiler the miniscript compiler can can tell you everything that you need to know about it 
Yeah, so this is somewhat to get like a easier to understand representation of what the underlying Bitcoin script actually does. Right? All the weird opcodes in the stack based language, uh, the miniscript compiler gives you a somewhat re humanly readable and understandable, um, uh, output. So, uh, th this of course is more intuitive than to understand for everyone, but, uh, like it seemed to previously Bitcoin script was just about the developers. Right? And surely developers will, of wallets will benefit from having a mini script. But it might even be that the end user will benefit from, from this new, more intuitive way to write Bitcoin contracts. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. So, so the idea is eventually, well, hopefully eventually there'll be, you know, just some, you know, some kind of GUI tool you can download and you can make your own uh, contract and it'll spit out the mini script for you. It'll spit out a full descriptor and you just add it to your wallet. And, and you don't have to even understand the the details in that descriptor. You just know you can just know that the compiler has has interpreted what you want to do and, and created a, a script for you. So so hopefully in the in the future uh, we can have a lot more a lot more interesting scripts going on. Um, yeah, and and also Miniscript handles a lot of the edge cases too. So even if you're a developer and, and you're looking at script, there's a lot of really weird things in the Bitcoin scripting language that, that are completely unintuitive and non-obvious. And the only way you would know about them is if you actually read through the script interpreter code, uh, and like really did it in detail because Peter, Andrew and Sanket have all, uh, they all work on Miniscript and, and they've all come across some weird behavior that that they only discovered because, uh, with their mini script stuff, they're able to do fuzz testing and generate random mini scripts and see what happens when you run them through the script interpreter. Uh, so, so there's some, there's some weird shit. And if, if you're not aware of that as a developer, you could end up writing a script that, that doesn't quite do what you expect it to do. Yeah. I think anywhere in Bitcoin, if you look hard enough, there is some weird shit happening. <laughs> yeah.